the students in this session we will learn how to write the matlab code to find the linear convolution of two sequences using dft and idft method we know that convolution uses the mathematical tool to combine two signals to form the third signal the significance of convolution is to find the response of any system the linear convolution is the mathematical operation used to express the relation between the input and the output of an LTI system. The importance of linear convolution is to find the response of an LTI system, the linear time invariant system. Y of n is equal to x of n convolved with h of n. x of n, the input of an LTI system. h of n, the impulse response of an LTI system. Y of n is the output of an LTI system. We will study how to find a linear convolution using DFT and IDFT method. So this method is also called as a Stockhams method. Consider a two sequence x of n and h of n. First, we have to apply the DFT of x of n, the DFT of h of n. x of k is the DFT of x of n and h of k is the DFT of h of n. Multiply these two output. The multiplied output here is y of k. y of k is equal to x of k into h of k. Apply IDFT. We'll be getting y of n. The length of y of n is lx plus lh minus 1. We will see the calculation. x of n is equal to 1, 2. h of n is 1, 2, 1. The very first step, we have to calculate the length of x of n and length of h of n. Lx is 2, Lh is 3. The length of y of n, Lx plus Lh minus 1. We have to use this formula to calculate the length of y of n. 2 plus 3 minus 1 is equal to 4. The very important thing here is zero padding. For both the sequence, we have to pad zeros to make the length to be equal to the length of y of n. x of n is equal to, as we have to write the sample, 1, 2, followed by padding of zeros. The padding of zero is nothing but ly minus lx, 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. And here the padding of zero is nothing but ly minus lh. And here we have to pad two zeros, and here we have to pad one zeros. The next step, we have to compute the DFT of X of N, the DFT of H of N using the matrix method. In matrix method, first we have to write the twiddle matrix followed by the sample. And here the samples are 1, 2, 0, 0. Take the first row, multiply with the column. Take the second row, multiply with the column. We'll be obtaining the output as 3, 1 minus 2J, minus 1, 1 plus 2J. The same procedure we have to repeat for h of k. The output of h of k is 4 minus 2j, 0 and 2j. The next step we have to multiply these two output. So we have to find y of k is equal to x of k into h of k. Multiply these two outputs. Element by element. You'll be getting the output as 12 minus 4 minus 2j, 0 minus 4 plus 2j. For this output, we have to apply IDFT. Y of n is equal to the IDFT of y of k. So when you are writing the formula of IDFT, we have to go with 1 by n. Here the n is the number of sample. Total number of sample is here is 4. And write the twiddle matrix and followed by 12 minus 4 minus 2j, 0 minus 4 plus 2j. Take the rows and multiply with the column. The output here is 1, 4, 5, 2. This output we can able to verify using the simplest method. So next to compute this, to compute this program using a MATLAB, we need to follow the following step. First, we have to try to get the input from the user. Here we have two input, x of n and h of n. 
and we have to find the length of x of n, h of n, and y of n. Then we have to find the convolution of two sequence using the MATLAB function FFT. The FFT is the fast Fourier transform. And this is to compute DFT with less number of calculation. And we have to plot the signal and display the output. The MATLAB function used in this particular program is input, length, FFT, IFFT, display, subplot, stem, X label, Y label, and title. The operators used in the code is colon, comma, dot star. The dot star is the element wise multiplication. We will see how to execute this program. So before writing any code, we have to go with CLC, clear the command window, and clear all, clear all the variables in the workspace and close all, close all the existing windows. The next step, we have to get the input from the user. For that, we have to use the keyword input. Within the bracket, within the quotes, write the comment. X is equal to input, enter the first sequence. H is equal to input, enter the second sequence. After getting the input from the user, we have to calculate the length of X of N and the length of H. The length of X is LX, the length of H is LH. The next step, we are going to plot the signal for better visualization. N is equal to 0 colon 1 colon LX minus 1. The colon is the colon operator, the step increment by 1. And totally here, you are going to plot 6 figure, figures. So we have to go with a subplot, a subdividing the plot into the number of rows and columns. 2, 3, 1, pointing the first plot. Then we have to plot the signal by taking n, comma x. For various value of n, you are plotting the signal. What signal you are plotting here? It's nothing but x. And assign the x label within the bracket, within the quotes, y label within the bracket, within the quotes, and title. The same process, procedure we have to repeat for h. We have to take the variable for index, then subdividing the plot to 3, 2, pointing the second plot, and go with stem of m, comma h, x label, y label, and title. After plotting the input, we have to calculate the length of y of n. The length of y of n is lx plus lh minus 1. n is equal to 0, colon, 1, colon, p minus 1. The next we have to apply FFT. FFT is the fast Fourier transform. It is used to compute DFT with less number of calculation. So we have to pass the variable. So when you're passing the variable, we have to give the input. And here the input is x comma p. We have to give the input here x comma p. The p is the length of y of n subdividing the plot 2, 3, 3. The number of row is 2, the number of column is 3 and 3. Assign the x label, y label and title. The similar way we have to do it for h is equal to FFT of h comma p. In the next step we have to multiply these two output x and h. So we have to use the dot star operator. The dot star is nothing but element wise multiplication. Each element we are taking and you're multiplying. Then after that, we have to apply IFFT to get the output of Y of N. So Y is equal to IFFT of capital Y. So we have to go with the subplot two. We have to go with the subplot of two, three, three for plotting the capital X. For plotting the capital H, we have to go with two, three, four, pointing the fourth plot. And for plotting the capital Y, we have to go with 2, 3, 5, pointing the fifth plot. And 2, 3, 6 for pointing the last graph. After that, we have to use the stem. Take the value of n starting from 0 to p minus 1. We have to take your stem of n comma x for capital X. And stem of n comma h for capital H. And n comma y for capital Y. 
the stem of n comma y for the final output. Once everything is done, we have to go with the x label and we have to give within the bracket, within the quotes. And if you see the label here, it is k because it is a discrete Fourier transform, the transformed output. For the transformed output, we have to take the index as k. The y label is x of k. The title is the DFT of the first signal. And here also, if you see the label here, it is k. The y label is h of k. The title here is the DFT of the second signal. And the multiplied output again is the DFT of two signal. So we have to go with X label of K, a Y label of the term capital Y. Then we have to give the title multiplying DFT. Any title we can give. The next one Y is equal to I FFT of capital Y. For this signal, we have to go with stem followed by X label and we have to go with the Y label and here the X label is N. This is N not K, this is N. Y label X of N convolved with H of N. The title is linear convolution. See, after typing this program, we have to go with the run button. There is a button for execute the program. Just we have to execute the program. After executing the program, we have to get the input from the user. The user will type the input. In few of the statements, there is no semicolon. In few of the statement, there is no semicolon. So those output will be coming in the command window. If you want to hide the output from the command window, then we have to go with semicolon. We will see how to execute this program. And here also we don't have a semicolon and these output will be displayed in the command window. So we can able to get the output of H, capital Y and Y in the command window. So why you are getting those output because there is no semicolon in the, at the end of the statement. After typing the program, we have to go with the execution. So try to click the run button. We have to pass the input. Here the input is one, two, three, four. So when you're typing the input, we have to go with the square bracket. The second input is one, two, one, two. Use the square bracket. Within the bracket, we have to type in the input one, two, one, two. And this is the output of convolution of two signal. And you will be getting the plot. So this is the first signal, the first sequence, the second sequence, the DFT of the first sequence, the DFT of the second sequence, and this is multiplying two DFT. And this is the final output. This is the output from IDFT. So these are the possible viva questions from this program. Thank you all.